Um, I mentioned earlier the uh, ability to perhaps uh, to uh, make it even more privacy preserving than we originally founded the industry. And so next we'll hear from Deepak Tiwari from Privately, who can tell us a bit more about their innovation on that front. Thank you, Ian. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm very glad to be here. My name is Deepak, as, as the slide suggests. I'm the CEO and founder of Privately. We are a Swiss company based in Lausanne. And the innovation that I'm going to talk to you about, and Yoti has given us a lot of good, uh, good information, which I don't need to repeat, is facial age estimation and voice age estimation, but that done completely on device. So um, essentially, uh, we call our innovation uh, multimodal because it can involve face, voice, or a combination of both. But what's very interesting is that that presents uh, a number of, it, it answers a lot of questions that were that were mentioned by an earlier speaker today, uh, which was, can we do age estimation quickly, cheaply, anonymously, and securely? And in this case, um, I'd like to show you how. Uh, uh, okay. Here, I got the video to work, but if you see, it takes a couple of seconds, like the Yoti speaker said before. The interesting thing, a face estimation is a face estimation is a face estimation, but no, it is not. In this case, the facial image never left your device. In fact, the machine learning models or the technology came down to your browser, executed the age check, and never left the device. So the only signal going out of your uh, in this age check is whether the camera saw a person who's an adult or not. And this changes the game. Because if you think about how we can scale this technology, how it can be deployed across millions and millions of age checks, cost has been a big concern of the industry. And if we are, we are able to use the processing power in the device of the user to then roll out age estimation quite broadly, uh, this presents a great opportunity here. Not to say that it also answers the question of privacy, because um, we've, we've seen in, a, uh, in the recent past a lot of objections from parents who, who, un, who misunderstood facial age estimation to be facial recognition, but one of their concerns was, are you uploading the, my kids' images somewhere? And the answer to that is no, it never leaves your device. But this is something to be explained. Um, okay. Uh, we found a lot of um, we found a lot of success in retail, particularly, um, which is a, which is where, if I can get this moving there, you will see it's a completely anonymous age estimation when a user approaches the till, and and an image uh, could just be um, flashed to the cashier saying, okay, above eighteen, or above twenty five, below twenty five. This is working in the UK, and it's working uh, in the US as well in Florida. Um, this technology, by the way, is EAL3. Um, the previous speaker at Yoti was explaining about the different levels of assurance. So this is an EAL3 level um, assured technology. And we can take it one notch up, uh, if I can get this working, by saying, what if I could validate uh, a further document on your device? And in this case, you see that the, the, that the person there has been adjudged above 18, but then it, they could use the NFC reader in their own phones to read off an NFC document and validate their age right there on the device, no information going out. So those were the two, uh, th those are some of the innovations I wanted to show you about. Just not to mention the last bullet on, on that slide is that we also have a voice-based age estimation technology which was deployed by actually the adult industry in France. I was able to effectively um, to to, to, to detect whether the, someone was reasonably below 15 years of age. So that by itself, the voice es estimation technology only has an uh, you know, a, a lower age assurance level, but in combination with others, it can prove um, quite interesting. I think last thing um, I want to say is, okay, okay sorry. Okay. Finally, uh, I have to say a, a, a couple of sentences about the accreditations and certifications. So this, uh, th this is very widely um, accredited now, at least in Europe. You see in, in Germany and in the UK. Uh, we, 
it is also a UK GDPR compliance uh, implementation. So uh, it, it's important to highlight because it's not just uh, there has to be a certification behind and proof that this technology entirely works on device. And this can then answer to some of the objections that we have, especially in the US around data privacy. And it's equally, it's been uh, audited by the UK uh, regulator as well. Happy to take more questions. Thank you. Thank you, Deepak. Um, yeah, I, I mean, obviously, um, every company operating in Europe in particular has to be compliant with data protection laws. So every method you've seen today would be compliant with data protection laws. But sometimes people are even more sensitive about their personal data. And that last example, I think, is for some of those of the most sensitive cases where people are particularly, you, know, you might say, paranoid about sharing their data and don't trust that people are going to behave legally with their data. So they've got that reassurance of doing it in their hand.